<clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show to talk about some NBA news. We're going to talk about some quick uh, NBA stuff. I'm not reading stuff off my phone. I'm just going to read off the computer. Uh, I'm just charging my phone right now, so I'm just going to read stuff off here off the computer. The first thing I'm going to talk about is Andre Iguodala. So he's been cleared to increase his activity, and he's expected to participate in practice sometime next week per a real GM. So, apparently, Andre Iguodala, he's been cleared to increase the activity. He's expected to participate in practice sometime next week. Last time he played was against the Suns. Uh, he got injured, uh, I think, a fractured left wrist. And he got the surgery, but now he, he's expected to uh, participate in practice sometime next week. Increases activity. Um... I don't know if we're still playing. I don't know if he'll be at, if he's gonna play any at all because I don't really see him getting on the court. But we're really talking about practice, man. Talking about practice. I mean, I don't know if he'll help us. Act like he's gonna get more than like 34 seconds of playing time. Like he's a good veteran player to have, but I doubt he'll get any playing time on the floor unless it's in garbage time. I mean, let's be real. So Julius Randle, this is via the Miami Herald. He said he's not concerned with Bam Adebayo's one-on-one -on -one defense, which is laughable. He said, "Quote: I'm not really worried about who it is. One-on-one, -on -one, it's not really a concern. It's about when the defense collapses." being able to make plays, end quote. So, I don't know. I mean, it kind of sounds like in this quote, he didn't discredit Bam's one-on-one -on -one defense. He said he really, he kind of did say he wasn't worried about it, but he didn't, like, full-on discredit his one-on-one -on -one defense. But, it's kind of a little, it kind of is a little disrespectful. kind of is a little disrespectful to pretty much play down an elite defender and bam at a ball, but they should be worried about his energy level and shot selection, but the Knicks need him to be more efficient and effective. Dude should be worried about his shot selection and making efficient shots. He, he mean, he's been the biggest playoff dropper. He needs to step up big time. I mean, bam just, he locked his shit up. He's locked his shit up so far. And he shot two for, two for nine when guarded by Bam, by the way. Games one and two. I know he was decent. But two of 14 in game three. As the primary defender, so. Yeah. I mean, Bama Ball hasn't been too good scoring in the playoffs, but his defense has been good, so that's kind of help, helpful. So James Harden in the playoffs has had 16 points, 3 of 14, 12 points, 2 of 14, that 45-point game, 7 of 30, 17 of 30, 4 of 18, 17 points, 8 points, 8 of 3, or 3 of 13, 21 points, 8 of 15, and 23 points, 8 of 21. So, in the playoffs, he's outside of that 45-point game and that 21-point game. Harden's had a really bad playoffs. He, he just hasn't had a good playoff outside of the 45-point, 21-point game. The Sixers really need James Harden to step up tonight. They really do. So, Paul George says Peyton Watson has next and compares him to Brandon Ingram. So, he's comparing Peyton Watson, a rookie of the uh, Denver Nuggets, to Aunt Brandon Ingram. And I don't think he plays much like Ingram statistically. Like, the stats will say he doesn't, but maybe he could be. But if he's, but if he's got next, the Nuggets would be pretty good. They'd be unstoppable. You run a uh, Murray, Watson, Porter, Gordon, Jokic lineup, you have to guard respect every single player. And they could run that lineup for the next five to seven years because they're all, they, those are still five good young players. 
So that would be nice. So the Heat, they played two playing games, and they're now two games away from the Eastern Conference Finals. That's crazy. They played two playing games. They lost the first one, but they made the second one to make it in. They beat the number one seed, New, uh, Milwaukee Bucks, in the first round 4-1, and now they're two games away from the Eastern Conference Finals. Just crazy. But it's largely the same team that went to the Finals in 2020. So... That's a good Cinderella story. Jimmy Butler's just been carrying that team. But I feel like the Celtics are way too deep for the Heat. I don't think the Celtics would beat the Heat. Or the Heat, I don't think the Heat would beat the Celtics. So I think the Celtics have a deeper team. Uh, Bronny James... Uh, has a future, according to many scouts in the NBA. He has solidified himself as a clear NBA player down the road. He's committed to USC. I think he's probably going to play one year of college to go to the NBA. And we're going to say, oh, people are just going to hate him because he's LeBron's son. But I think he's an actual, he's actually a nice player. Like, he's athletic, can shoot the ball and defend. That's pre pretty much a, a recipe for success in the modern NBA because he's athletic. They can, and they can shoot the ball and he's a great defender. So I thought that's a recipe for success in the in the league. So yeah, I think it's gonna be it for the NBA. So and that's all I'll say for this video until next time. Have a lot. Peace.